So I'm out here at a job today in Seven Hills for an MBN customer who's with Optus. They've got fibre to the node. Now they had, um, they've had problems since, when did you get it put on? 29th of May 2020. 29th of May 2020. Um, and since then they've had about 600 dropouts. Now this customer has kept meticulous notes. Um, she's had five techs out or contractors from MBN. Now this has all been verified. Um, she's also had Optus technicians themselves, four, four come out. Um, and they've run a bunch of tests. The customer wants to say a few words later anyway, so I'll let her um, say what she needs to say. But this has been going on forever and she's extremely frustrated. Um, MBN, the tech, they've put in a new internal cable going to a new socket inside the house. Um, they've run all sorts of tests, changed ports over, um, done a whole bunch of things, but it, the problem just keeps persisting. It drops out like 10 times a day or something, does it? The highest peak was 84 dropouts in one day. So the highest she said was 84 dropouts in one day. And then we didn't have any internet for three days, absolutely then, yeah. no internet. No internet sometimes for up We've to three had days. Four tickets raised for restoration um, for severe dropout issues. Yeah, so she's, they've had, been having ongoing issues for quite some time. So this is actually in the hands of the ombudsman now, um, and they've asked us to come out and investigate and find out what's going on. So what I want to show you here is that the internal cable is basically this leading cable here, right? So that goes directly to a socket. So I'll just show you under the house now, just to show you that this is a single line. It's not connected to um, any other sockets inside the house, so there's no bridge taps. So I'll show you that now. So I'm tracing out that cable that goes from the MBM box to the socket, because I wanted to see if it's a direct line, because um, apparently MBM or a tech had run the line in. Now, you can see this cable, all right, and I'll try and zoom in. You can see it's going to the wall there. I'll just pull it again. You can see it going into that. It's going into a hole there, you can see. Right, that hole is the, um, the utility box on the other side, right? And so that's a direct cable. And you can see this cable here. This is the, um, the cable there. And then the other end of it is going up there directly into the socket. So it's not connected to any internal wiring. Right, um, so I just need to show you that because this is going to the ombudsman. So you could see that was a single cable that was leaving there where the box is, and then you can see the other end of it uh, popping up here. The black cable there, right? So um, there is no internal cabling here, just that one piece of cable going to this brand new socket. Now, I've done an insulation resistance test, which I'm going to show you again now. That there is no problems on the um, on the internal cabling, so we'll do that now. Okay, so now I've got a lines test set number two um, connected up to the internal cablings on the first pair here, as you can see. Now we're going to switch that over. Um, it's on A and B, so it's testing the uh, the red and black pair there, and we're going to swap that over now to mega ohms. Right, and as you can see. Um, there's no fluctuations in that, so that's perfect. So what I'll do now is I'll short these two out so you can see um, that the lines test set is working properly. Now, and you can see uh, we've got that um, there shorting out. So you can see that's working properly. Now I'll remove this so you can see. Um, I'll take that off. Okay, so that's just been removed and you can see it's gone back um, to infinity. All right, so that's working fine. There's no problem with the insulation resistance inside the house. Now, we've got a couple of weird things happening on this one, which I'm gonna show you now. So now I've got my F-set connected um, down to the socket. All right, so we can see the tone coming out. So let's go outside and I'll show you what's going on. So one of the weird things that's happening is that, as you could see before, that, lead, that cable coming from the utility box on the side goes directly to um, the socket in the bedroom where the modem is. But this is another socket that's in the lounge room, and this is just connected with the yellow cabling, and this is not connected to anything, right? But 
don't know if you can hear that, but you're getting like a, a partial tone, which is really quite odd, okay? So I think that, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what's going on with this, but I just want to show you something else. So I'm back out of the utility box. Now you can see I've twisted the um, internal cable now to the uh, leading cable going back out to the street. And the blue, you get a nice clear tone. With the white, you get this like nothing, right? I'll do it here so you can see. Right, nothing on the white. A nice clear one on the blue. Now that usually means there's either an open circuit somewhere or there's some sort of insulation resistance problem um, on that cable. Now, when I disconnect this, you'll see that the white comes back good again, right? Okay, so I've disconnected the leading cable from the internal cables, and now, nice clean tone there, nice clean tone there. All right, so the issue is going back out into the street, okay? So the customer's cabling's fine. Now, sometimes, I don't know why that other socket is getting a partial tone on it. It's quite odd. Um, but sometimes when we used to have foreign battery faults back in the days, we'd have all sorts of weird things happen like that. So um, that's partly the issue. Now I want to show you something here, okay? All right, so MBN had also um, apparently put in a new cable. All right, so this is coming in aerial. So it goes here, cross over this pole. All right. And then it goes to that can that's up on the pole. And then it runs down and then uh, goes to a pit here. So I just want to show you something inside this pit real quick because I don't know what's going on here um, so basically you can see this is what the cable this is what the customers cable is running through now they haven't even put the cap back on this right there was all slugs and stuff over this right. now if I pull that up and you can see the lid's down there in the clamp right they haven't even put a lid on it They've just left it like this. The amount of rain we've had in the last, you know, few weeks, um, I'm not surprised. You know, looking inside this to see if there's gel. Right. Well, it's full of dirt. It doesn't look like there's any gel. Right. But that is just not on. So I'm not going to touch that. I just wanted to pop it open. I was just curious um, because this has been ongoing for, you know, it's almost come up 12 months. So um, this needs resolution. So I'm doing this, uh, have a look in here, because this is off to the ombudsman, this one. So it's pretty clear to me that this uh, issue is um, an MBN related issue. It's got nothing to do with the customer's internal cabling, because basically it's brand new cable from here to the socket, and then from here back out into the street. You get here, there's obviously some issue with one of these legs. So. If that joint's like that out the front, I'm assuming um, there's joints like that everywhere. So, uh, yeah, just got to go back to NBN. So the customer wants to say a couple of words. So as Jason was saying, we've had five NBN technicians come out, four Optus technicians since the 29th of May, 2020. Three days after we switched over, we had issues. The issue is it's the same issue for nearly the last 10 months, dropout issues. The array of tests that have been conducted include a verification test, an on-demand BT detection test, sync tests, a loopback test, which is part of the NBN system, and the NBN technician said they passed that. We've had a line test, an SLT test, we've had a port reset, we've had a single and line test. We've had a metallic line test. Optus said it could be internal wiring inside the telephone socket. We've had the telephone socket looked at. We've had the Optus technicians look at all the cords and the cables and determine that there was no issues with the setup of the modem and all the cords and cables. We had, for example, 450 dropouts 
commenced between the 29th of May 2020 and the 17th of September 2020. At one stage we had zero internet for three whole days. We've also had one of the NBN technicians who visited on Friday the 2nd of October 2020 at 12.40 p.m. Which was the fourth time We'll just uh, wait for the garbage truck to go. Which uh, at that stage, that was the fourth NBN technician to visit. So as we repeat, Friday the 2nd of October 2020 arrived at my place at 12.40 p.m. He did some sink tests. So um, I spoke with NBN Assurance directly myself on Tuesday the 15th of September 2020 at 3.22 p.m. I phoned 1-800-626-662. I was given this number um, out of frustration and desperation. Um, and there was a note left by Optus saying that the NBN technician who came out mentioned the line from the node to the house is faulty. Uh, at that stage, we had uh, four restoration tickets for severe dropout issues have been raised. One on the 1st of July 2020, one on the 11th of September 2020, and again on the 14th of September 2020. Apparently, all the, all the restoration tickets were then closed off. And at that stage, I was advised by NBN Insurance, the person I spoke to, to run an LSD test on the line. And NBN can send, can see drop out on the line and issue from the node to the, prem, to the premises. Um, at current, the matter is we've been with the Ombudsman's office for three months. The last report from NBN uh, sent to the Ombudsman office uh, said it was radio frequency interference. Uh, I've also got a text message from last year um, from NBN Assurance saying it was radio frequency interference. And today uh, the issue remains and continues. Thank you.